Hi there, this is Mrs. Often, and this is another math video with Mrs. Often. Today I'm going to talk about domain and range of a function from a graph. In class, you may have looked at domain and range from using the equation of a function, but what I want to talk about today is how you can find domain and range from looking at the graph. And I have a sample of about five graphs for us to look at and I'm going to use my really important green envelope as my math manipulative. Now, if you don't have green envelopes, you can use sticky notes, you can use a ruler, you can use pretty much whatever you want, um, but you do need to have some pretty good pictures of your graphs. Now, the graphs I have right in front of me right now are both functions. Uh, one is a cubic and one is an absolute value function and you'll notice they both have these nice arrows here and here here and here to indicate that the graphs continue on forever some math books are very good about showing this others are not I would say if you have a graph that looks like this one and it's inside a box and the graph extends to the edge of the box you can assume that it continues going on forever and you can just draw your own little arrows like this. So keep that in mind. I think it's really helpful. So I'm going to start off with this graph right here. And I'm going to start off by finding the domain. Now as you know, for these graphs the domain is the set of allowed x values. So I'm going to start by moving my trusty green envelope along the x-axis. Now I notice that the graph looks like it starts once I get to negative 5 on the x-axis. And I notice that it looks like it leaves the graph somewhere around in between 3 and 4, positive 3 and 4 on the x-axis. But I also notice that it has these little arrows. So I'm going to think to myself, what would happen if this graph were to continue? Well, it would continue going back this way along the x-axis all the way out in the direction of negative infinity. And if it were to continue up the page this way, it would be pointing in a more or less right-handed direction all the way towards positive infinity. So there's two ways that I can write this. I can write that the domain is all real numbers, or I can write that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that may not be totally obvious from looking at this graph. You need to have a little bit of creative visualization to see that, yes, this graph is going to continue heading left. It's going to continue heading right. And eventually, it'll take a while, but it'll head towards negative infinity and positive infinity. Many polynomial functions are like this. In fact, I would say all polynomial functions, except those which model real-world situations, have this domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, or domain of all real numbers. Now for the range of this graph, I'm going to use my same helpful manipulative. And looking at the graph again, I notice that I'm at the very bottom at negative 6, and the graph has already started. In fact, it's pointing down. So it would go continuing down all the way to negative infinity. And as I travel up, I notice there's this arrow here. So the graph would continue up. You may say, oh look, it stopped right here. No, don't worry. There's this bit of the graph over here that's continuing. So I'm going to follow that with my green envelope. And I'm going to see, oh, I could keep continuing off the graph up towards positive infinity. So my range, like my domain, is all real numbers, or I can write that using the interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. So there's my first graph, a cubic. Domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and range is negative infinity to positive infinity. And I'm going to look at my second graph right here. This is an absolute value function. Now I notice for my domain, once again, it goes all the way over to the left-hand side, and that arrow is pointing 
so it would head towards negative infinity. And as I follow, it continues right off the right-hand side of the graph. It would continue forever towards positive infinity. So once again, <laughs> domain is all real numbers. And we go from negative infinity to positive infinity using the interval notation. The range is not going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. I know this because when I get to the bottom here, I'm at negative 6, my um, green envelope is not touching any part of the function graph. In fact, it doesn't start until here at y equals negative 5. But then it continues. And these arrows up at the top, they're both pointing up and off the page. So my range starts at negative 5, down here, goes up, headed towards positive infinity. I can write either y is greater than or equal to negative 5, or I can write that the range is from negative 5 to positive infinity, again, using that interval notation. And I have some other graphs over here. So this function is a square root function right here. Now you'll notice it's pointing in a leftward direction and up pointing left and up. And so if it's pointing left, that means that it's headed towards negative infinity in the x direction. And then we keep going and going and going and going. And the graph ends at 4 on the x-axis. So if I want to talk about the domain of this graph, I need to say that the domain is all values of x that are less than 4, and I'm again just pointing to that 4 because you can see that's where the graph ends. And it ends with a solid circle, so it's less than or equal to 4, or I can write it using the interval notation. The graph goes from negative infinity to 4 for its domain. Once again, like the absolute value graph, this graph does not have a range that is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Using my helpful green envelope again, I'm moving up the graph, and I notice that I don't even see the function graph until I hit the x-axis. At the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So my range starts at 0. As I keep moving up, I notice that I get to this arrow. This arrow, as I said before, is pointing left and up. If it's pointing up, then it's headed towards positive infinity along the y-axis. You can see it's going to take a long, long time to get to positive infinity, but it is trending in that direction. So my range starts at y equals 0, continues all the way on to positive infinity, and I can write that either using an inequality, saying, well, y is greater than or equal to 0, or I can use the interval notation, saying that it starts at 0, and it ends, it doesn't end, but it trends towards positive infinity. And then I'd like to look at this graph last. This graph is who knows what type of function. It's really weird looking. I couldn't even describe a equation for it, but that's okay because we don't need an equation if we have the graph. We can still determine the domain and range. I notice that this graph is really sandwiched 
within the space of these graph squares. I notice that it starts off with a hole on one side, that means it's not equal to this point, and then it has a dot over here saying it is equal. For my domain, along the x-axis, it starts with this hole at x equals negative 5. And it's continuous along the x-axis. Everywhere I'm stopping along the x-axis, I can see the graph. Up there, it has an x-intercept. Spotting it out here, starts up again, another x-intercept. And then at 5 on the x-axis, it ends. So my graph goes from negative 5 to positive 5. X is sandwiched in between those values. It can be equal to positive 5, as I can see from this filled in circle. It cannot be equal to negative 5. So you'll notice I use two different inequality symbols here. My interval notation is going to look like this. It can't be equal to negative 5. It can be equal to positive 5. So that's the domain of this graph. Okay, to look at the range, when I'm starting out, oh, again, I can see that the graph is not graphed until I hit negative 2 on the x-axis. So there's negative 2. I'm sorry, that was on the y-axis, negative 2 on the y-axis. Now, what confuses students is they say, well, over here, it's an open circle, and over here, it's a filled-in dot. Well, if you have a open circle and you have a filled-in dot, then the graph or the function can be equal to that y value. So it's like the filled-in dot at the same level wins, I guess. So this graph really starts at negative 2, and it goes all the way up passing the x-axis, and stops at positive 2. So the range of this graph is between negative 2 and positive 2. It can be equal to negative 2. It can be equal to positive 2. And again, writing that with the interval notation looks like this. Notice square brackets to demonstrate that it can be equal to negative 2 and can be equal to positive 2. So that's how you can find domain and range from a graph. I hope this has been a helpful video, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.